Now, two types of transformer we have: step down as well as step up transformer. So you can see the symbol of the transformer in this manner. This is a pri primary winding and this is the secondary winding with the two equal parallel lines. A step down transformer is one whose secondary windings are less than the primary windings. In other words, the transformer secondary voltage is less than the primary voltage. So the transformer is designed to convert high voltage low current power into low voltage high current power and it is mainly used in domestic applications if you can see onto the circuit diagram the number of windings in the secondary coil is much lesser than the primary coil so what will happen as we said that when an alternating current is passing through this particular coil surrounding to this particular coil there will be a varying magnetic field and in the particular part, uh, area of that particular magnetic varying magnetic field we have placed one more coil this is nothing but called as a secondary coil and there will be an induced emf in this particular secondary coil and the current can be seen in the secondary coil so if you have a less number of turns on the secondary coil less induced emf will be can be seen in the secondary coil so the transformer is designed in such a manner which converts high voltage which have a low current power into a low voltage which will be having high current power so this is called step down transformer basically used for any domestic appliances especially mobile charger if you take a mobile charger we use a transformer because it have to step down from 220 voltage input here to a 5 voltage output and that 5 voltage output ac should be again converted to a dc form that dc pure form is used for a mobile charger so basically a charger will have a transformer that to a transformer which is a step down transformer which will convert a 220 voltage to a 5 voltage ac and that 5 voltage ac should be converted to a 5 voltage dc it means a rectification is happening over there and that dc pure uh, voltage output is given as an input to the mobile to make our mobile charger every day here is step down step up transformer so what is step up transformer if you can see that this is a low voltage converted to a high voltage so number of turns on the primary coil is less compared to the secondary coil so we can say that the induced emf will be in a multiple times of the primary coil because the number of turns in the secondary coils is more so it is made in such a manner where the volt low voltage high power current is converted to high voltage low power current so this is called as a step up transformer basically we used for where we use we used for the uh, apartments because for a single house we can adjust with a 220 voltage for to run our all home appliances but the same 220 voltage cannot be sufficient for 10 families which are staying in an apartment so we use a transformer which is called as a step up transformer for an example the same 220 voltage can be multiplied into 10 times using a high number of turns on to the second coil so here we say that the 220 voltage is input whereas the output is 2200 voltage because we have multiplied the input voltage into 10 times and that particular 220 voltage will be sufficient for a 10 families who are residing into a apartment so that that the basic application of step up transformer one more type it is called as an intermediate frequency transformer which works at a frequency of 455 kilohertz and cased with aluminum can you can see this tuning is achieved by using parallel capacitors across primary and secondary windings 
and applications are basically radio receivers so these are called as an if transformers intermediate frequency transformer the next is audio frequency transformers basically we, we, we use this into many of the applications audio frequency transformers works at a frequency between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz which is an audible range and are used in audio amplifier circuits they were essential in wall for matching the high impedance outputs of these amplifiers to low impedance loudspeakers but transistor amplifiers have much less need of for output transformers so this is called an af transformers audio frequency transformers with a range of having a frequency range between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz you can see that this is a pressed steel cam this is just an upper lid and uh, this is a shell type solid or powdered iron core you can see this grayish color okay and uh, this is a primary and secondary wind under lid of this uh, this is a pcb mounting tax so for the printed circuit boards we normally use this particular transformer which is called as an audio frequency transformer which will have a frequency range between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz of frequency values these are the symbols uh, we can see here uh, how the symbols for different type of inductors are made fixed air core inductors or fixed ferrite cores tap air variable air core variable ferrite uh, here you can see the fixed iron dust coat inductors with the total two plates two lines fixed iron coat inductors this is a roller coaster variable inductors so these are all the symbols for different type of inductors for our electronic applications the next are relays or contactors so relays this is the beautiful is shown a diagram uh, high power source this is a low power source and here this low power source is winded so here we have used an inductor and it's kind of a low power source source according to this particular electromagnetic induction this will work so this work as a switch so this is called this mechanism is called as a relay and here we can see the output Contactors, when a relay is used to switch a large amount of electrical power through its contacts, it is designated by a special name called as in contactors. You can see this is a relay, okay. This is in three phase AC power, and this is the load we have used over here as a motor. Now, the few examples are semiconductor families. The first we can see it is in a diode. It is nothing but an electronic device that permits current to pass or to flow in only one direction. So diodes are nothing but it is made up of two materials, P and N. When a P type material and N type material are added in the process of crystallization, a new device is formed and that device is called a diode. A transistor, if you take up two PN diodes, two PN diodes and suitably added, then a transistor is formed, which is nothing but a semiconductor device used for amplification and switching application in an electronic circuit. Basically, a transistor's main applications are amplifiers or it can be used as a switch circuit. Because transistor characteristics, if you study, it can be used at saturation region or cutoff region so fully off or fully on it means switch or transistor can be used as an amplifier because input section is forward and output section is reverse so input is low resistance output is high resistance so low resistance is converted into high resistance at the output end so it can be used as an amplifiers 
Amplifying a weak signal can be called as an, an amplifier. And one more diode uh, semiconductor family, you have a thyristor, a class 4 of four layer semiconductor devices used to control AC voltage application. Four layers in the sense you can have PN, PN, or NP, NP. So that all semiconductor devices are called as an thyristors. Let's understand the semiconductor uh, uh, diodes first. So first is the crystal diode. See how it looks like. This is an anode to collect the electrons or uh, to generate the electrons. And this is a cathode to collect the electrons. So the first is a crystal diode. This can be called as a point contact diode also. So these diodes, microwave semiconductor devices were developed during World War II to be used in microwave receivers and detectors. So especially in the case of uh, uh, World War II, this diode was uh, uh, invented especially to extract the audio modulation to produce the sound in the earphones. Rectifier diodes, basically it does the rectification from AC signal to DC signal. As we were talking about the mobile charger, it consists of a transformer, step down transformer, 220 voltage will be converted to 5 voltage AC. That 5 voltage AC is converted into a 5 voltage DC. So using this diode, a rectification happens. Or this rectified diode can be used as an inverter also. Then the third is Zener diode. If the Zener diode is connected in forward bias, it will behave same as in the PN injection diode. The speciality of Zener diode is when it is converted into a reverse bias. So when the Zener diode is converted into converted uh, connected into a reverse bias, it can be used as a voltage regulator because of the breakdown voltage. It can be used as a voltage regulator. Field effect diode. So FETs are devices with three terminals. One is source. You can see here, unlike the diode will have two terminals, but here you can see the three terminals. One is source. The other is gate. The third is drain. So source, gate, drain. FETs control the flow of current by the application of voltage to the gate, which in turn alters the conductivity between drain and source. FETs are also known as unipolar transistor since they involve single carrier type of operation. See, BJTs are different. BJTs are bipolar junction transistor, but FETs are unipolar transistor. But in, in the sense, the current in the diode is because of any one majority charge carriers. It can be electrons or it can be holes. So FET is a specified type of metal oxide semiconductor designed to handle significant power levels. Compared to the other power semiconductor devices, its main advantages are high commutation speed and good efficiency at low voltages. It shares with the IGBT an isolated gate that makes it easy to drive. We have tunnel diode or Izaki diode. So a tunnel diode or Izaki diode is a type of semiconductor diode that has effectively negative resistance due to a quantum mechanical. You can see this, how it looks like a you know, symbol for the tunnel diode. Due to a quantum mechanical effect called tunneling. This is by using the quantum mechanical effect called tunneling. So tunnel diode have a heavily doped positive to negative junction that is about 10 nanometer wide. You have a diac diode. So diac in the sense a diac is a two terminal three layer bidirectional device which can be switched from its off state to on state for either polarity of applied voltage. Or we can say the diac in the sense this diac Diac in the sense diode for alternating current. Diode, diode for alternating current. 
is a diode that conducts electrical current only after its breakover voltage has been reached momentarily. This behavior is bidirectional, meaning typically the same for both directions of current. You have photodiode is a type of photodetector capable of converting light into either current or voltage. So light, it is converting a light energy into a current or voltage, basically uh, depending upon the mode of operation. The common traditional solar cell used to generate electrical solar power is the large area photodiode. So what we see the solar energy solar cells is nothing but a large area of photodiode. So it depends, it converts the light energy, the light which is uh, uh, penetrated into the cells and that intensity or luminosity of the particular light will be converted into the form of current or voltage. This is a simple one, light emitting diode is a conductor semiconductor light source. LEDs are used as an indicator lamps in many devices and are increasingly used for other light means. These are called SCRs or silicon controlled Rectifier or can be called as a semiconductor control rectifier is a four layered solid state current controlling device. Four layered in the sense, this is an example of thyristor. An SCR conducts when a gate pulse is applied to it, just like a diode. It has a four layer of semiconductors that form two structures, namely NPNP or PNPN. So it's an example of thyristor. So three terminals with a four layered semiconductors. The one is anode, this is cathode and this is called as a gate. We have a triad diode which is nothing but a three terminal semiconductor switching device which can control AC in the load. It is also a three terminal. So this is anode 1, anode 2 and this is a gate. A triad is a high speed solid state device that can switch and control AC power in both the directions. Three, three terminals which can control an AC power in both the direction of sinusoidal waveform. Being a solid state device, thyristors can be used to control lamps, motors or heaters etc. Quadrac, see here, are a special type of thyristors in the sense four layers special type of thyristors which combines a diac and triac in a single package. The diac is a triggering device for the triac. So we, if we combine a diac and triac in a single package, then that can be called as a quadrac. We have phototransistors. So we can say that these phototransistors are extensively used to detect light pulses and convert them into a digital electronic signal. It is converting a light pulse into a digital electronic signals. These are operated by light rather than the electric current, pro providing a large amount of gain. See, we have seen a photodiode. Here, we have seen a photodiode. This photodiode and uh, this phototransistor are different. Like photodiodes use a PN junction diode, which converts the light energy into an electric current. Example, solar cells. Whereas the phototransistors uses the ordinary transistors like NPN transistors for the conversion of light into current. I hope got the difference between the photodiodes and phototransistors. In the case of photodiodes, it uses a diodes which converts a light energy into electrical current. Whereas in the case of phototransistor, it uses a transistors for the conversion of light into convert. Basically, both are converting light into current or voltage, but there they are using a diode, whereas here we are using a transistor. You have transistor, like uh, as we told, transistor, transformation of resistor from low to high value. It can be when a two PN junction diodes are suitably added, a new device is formed. It can be PNP or NPN. These are the symbol for uh, NPN transistor and this is for PNP. So you have three terminals. One is called emitter, 
base and collector emitter emits the electrons and uh, injects to the base because base is very lightly doped only 5% of the electrons will be recombining with the base region and rest the 95% of the electrons will be collected by the collector region so emitter, emitter region is highly doped base is thin and lightly doped collector is wide and moderately doped so we can say that the current components ie is equal to ib plus ic and here this is a symbol of an npn the arrow shows outwards to the base the arrow shows the direction of the flow of current in the circuit whereas the electrons because the electrons are moving towards the base the current in the circuit will be opposite to the flow of electrons so this arrow shows the flow of current in the circuit so if the arrow is outward to the base it is an npn if the arrow is inward to the base it is a pnp transistor the last we have called as in jfet that jfet can be n channel jfet or p channel jfet this is nothing but junction gate field effect transistor It is nothing but the simplest types of FETs. Earlier we have seen the field effect transistor. So JFETs are three terminal semiconductor devices that can be used as electronically controlled switches, amplifiers, or voltage control resistors. Again, you have a three terminal gain, drain, and source. So this is N channel and this is a P channel. Arrow, see the arrow is towards the base and here the arrow is outward the base so this shows this is a p type and this is an n type n channel jpeg p channel jpeg now integrated circuits are next for the uh, active uh, component example diode semiconductor families like transistors thyristors and ic's but the example for the active components let us see the uh, introduction of the ICs, the types of ICs, and how the generation have took place. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the ICs? So, what is integrated circuits? A complex set of electronic components and their interconnections that are imprinted onto a tiny slice of semiconductor materials. Integrated circuits are usually called as an ICs or chips. You can see a few of the pictures here. Integrated circuits were made possible by the experimental discoveries, which showed that semiconductor devices could perform the functions of vacuum tubes. And by mid 20th century, technology advancements in semiconductor device fabrications. Earlierly, it was through the vacuum tubes, but now all the semiconductor devices. The integration of large number of tiny transistors into a small chip was an enormous improvement over the manual assembly of circuits using electronic components. The ICS mass production capability, reliability, and building block approach to circuit design ensured the rapid adoption of standardization ICS in place of designs using discrete transistors. If you see the IC, IC history, an IC also referred as chip or microchip is a set of electronic circuits on one small chip of semiconductor material, normally silicon. This can be made much smaller than the discrete circuit made from independent electronic components. ICs can be made very compact having up to several billion transistors and other electronic components in an area the size of fingernail. According to Morris laws, every year we are multiplying the transistor like anything into the ICs. The width of each conducting line in a circuit can be made smaller and smaller as technology advances. In 2008, it dropped below 100 nanometers and has now been reduced to tens of nanometers. This is the structure you can see. Uh, 
system specification first architectural design we can see the flow chart for the ics functional design and logical design then circuit design physical design physical verification and sign off then the fabrications are done packaging and testing and then we can say that the ic have developed so this is the flow chart how the ics are manufactured we have types of ics monolithic thick and thin film ics and hybrid ics what are monolithic a monolithic microwave integrated circuits or mmic is a type of integrated circuits device that operates at microwave frequencies these devices typically perform functions such as microwave mixing power amplification low noise amplification and high frequency switching inputs and outputs on mmic devices are frequently matched to a characteristic inference of 50 ohms this makes them easier to use as cascading of mmics does not require an external matching network the second type of ics are thick and thin film ics the general characteristics properties and appearance of thin and thick film integrated ics are similar although they both differ in many respects from monolithic integrated circuits so what are the difference they are not formed within a semiconductor wafer but on the surface of an insulating substrate such as glass or an appropriate ceramic materials the primary difference between the thin and thick film techniques is the process employed for the forming the passive components and the metallic conduction pattern the thin film circuit employs an evaporation or cathode splitting techniques the thick film employs silk screen techniques the third type of ics are hybrid ics a hybrid integrated circuit hic hybrid micro circuit or simply hybrid is a miniaturized electronic circuit constructed of individual devices such as semiconductor devices example transistors and diodes and passive components example resistors inductors transformers and capacitors bonded to a substrate or a printed circuit board you can see here this printed circuit board pcb hybrid circuits are often encapsulated in epoxy as shown in the photo you can see this particular photographs a hybrid circuit serves as a component on a pcb in the same way as a monolithic integrated circuits so it is printed and encapsulated on the pcb you can see this here all ics the difference between the two types of ics is in how they are constructed and manufactured we have seen the types like monolithic thin and thick and the, the last one hybrid circuits uh, different types of ics this is how the generation of ics took place ssi msi lsi vlsi vvlsi wsi and the latest one is called as a nano technology scale of integration see how the uh, generation of ics took place with the number of transistors in joule ssis were having 2 to 64 msi the number of transistors were 64 to uh, approximately 2000 lsi 2000 to 64000 transistors vlsi 64000 to somewhere 20 lakh transistors and now the ulsi is 2 lakh 20 uh, uh, lakh transistors and there is no upper limit usage of transistors into the ics so this is how the generations of ics taking place the first is basic first one is small scale integration ssi normally it has about 20 components the minuteman missile and the apollo program needed lightweight digital computers for their initially guided flight computers the apollo guidance computer led and motivated the 
IC technology while the minded men missile force into mass production. So this is how it looks like small scale integrations. The next uh, generation was MSI, medium scale integration. It can have about, have about 100 components. Medium scale integration came into industry in the late 90s, 1960s. MSI is the next step in development of ICs after small scale integration. Medium scale integration allowed more complex systems to be produced using smaller circuit boards than in SSI. The third generation was last larger scale integration. It have about thousand components. LSI is the process of integrating or embedding thousands of transistors on single silicon semiconductor microchip. LSI technology was conceived in mid 1970s when computer processor microchips were under development. The fourth is very large scale integration, DLSI. Very large scale integration. It can have about 10,000 components. DLSI began in 1970s when complex semiconductor communication technologies were being developed. So here it is printed on DLIC. You can see the integrated chip. The next generation was very, very large scale integration, VVLSI also known as ultra large scale integration. It can have about 10 million components. The ability to pack more electronic components onto a chip increases the computational power and speed of the computer or other machine in which the chip resides. The so super power, super computers, how it is happening only because of the uh, latest generated uh, ICs. Fifth one was vapor scale integration WSI. The evolution in semiconductor technology that builds a gigantic circuit on an entire vapor. Just as the IC eliminated cutting apart thousands of transistors from the vapor only to wire them back again on a circuit board. Vapor scale integration eliminates cutting part cutting apart the chips and the last what's happening now is the nanotechnology nanotechnology in the context of computer science is a type of engineering gear towards building electronic components and devices measured in nanometers which are extremely tiny in size and structure nanotechnology facilitates the building of functional matter and systems at the scalar level of an atom or molecule. Nanotechnology is also known as nanotech. Nanotechnology works through different approaches to build nanomaterials of threads, including bottom up, top bottom, top down, and functional system development. In a top up approach, a product is designed as it involves from its tiniest form factor to a larger form. Whereas in the case of top-down approach, a large product may be reverse engineered to develop product scale according to a nanometer. Whereas the functional approach deals with a complete system and may incor incorporate both bottom-up and top-down approaches. These are the few advantages of an IC. It is very low, very, very low cost, uh, small in size, reduced power consumption, highly reliable, higher operating speed, reduced external wiring connection, and easy to use. But whereas there are few disadvantages of ICs are component dependent, limited capacitance, impossible to fabricate transformers. So so far we cannot use the transformers under that. Limited power supplies, not flexible. These are few of the IC packages, single inline in packaging, dual inline packaging, and zigzag inline packaging. You can see that the single inline pin packaging or called as an SIP or SIPP 
as one row of connecting pins. It is not as popular as DIP, but has been used for packaging RAM chips and multiple resistors with a common pin. SIPs group RAM chips together on a small board either by DIP process or surface mounting SMD process. If you open up your CPU and see the RAM, it is normally it is with a package of SIPs. We can say that single inline packaging. Dual inline packaging is an electronic components package with a rectangular housing and two parallel rows of electrical connecting pins. In general, we use this kind of ICs. The package may be thorough hole mounting to a printed circuit board or inserted into inner socket. We can use into a PCBs or into a breadboard. Zigzag line packaging. The zigzag inline packaging package or a zip was a short-lived packaging technology for ICs, particularly dynamic RAM, RAM chips. A zip is an integrated circuit encapsulated in a slab of plastic with 20 or 40 pins, measuring about 3 mm into 30 mm into 10 mm dimensions. The package's pins protrude in two rows from one of the long edges. The two rows are staggered by 1.27 mm, giving them a zigzag appearance and allowing them to be spaced more closely than a rectangular grid would allow. So these are the three different kind of packages we have for the ICs. You can see zigzag inline packaging. This is how it looks here. Uh, we have few other components other than the active components and the passive components. Uh, which are commonly used in creating a uh, electronic devices uh, loudspeaker an electric device used to convert electrical signal into a sound signal a battery an energy source that uses a chemical reaction to convert chemical energy into an electrical energy it is composed of zinc or magnesium and a metal connect connector and a lead out ground commonly referred as a points of circuits Antenna intercepts and collects the radio signal that comes from the transmitter of radio or TV stations. We use fuse, a protective device that blows open when there is an excessive current flows in the circuit. So if there is an overload, the fuse, this, this blows up so that the other appliances cannot be uh, corrupted. Switch, mechanical device that is used to turn on or off a circuit momentarily control the power in the circuit then uh, push button switch or uh, mm, you can say that it is normally closed or normally open these are the symbols for push button switch one is open and one is closed so with this we have covered up entirely what are the passive elements uh, like resistors capacitors inductors transformers and all and uh, what are the active elements <clears throat> especially the diodes and semiconductor families uh, transistor thyristors and integrated chips we have also seen the integrated types generations and uh, inline packagings so thank you thank you one and all for having so much of patience for listening all the classes Thank you once again.